Let's start out with some of the basics. So we call them periodicals. Periodicals are journals, magazines, newspapers. Of course, if you're a researcher, the thing you'll be dealing with most of the time, of course, is the idea of the journals that you'll be citing. So let's take a look at the general form for APA. In APA, when you write your reference list, you're going to begin with the author, comma, that's the author's last name, surname, and then the author's first name and middle initial, and then the, auth the second author and the second author's first name and middle initial, and the third author, etc. And you can see here that the author's name is the surname, but then the first name and the middle name, first name, middle name, actually we use the first letter only. We don't use the whole name, we just use the initial. So that's capitalized. Also note, there's a space there. So first name period, space. Middle name period, space. And then we have a comma, and then the next author. And then after that author, comma, and then the next author. And before the last author, if there's more than, more than one, then you're going to have the ampersand. Now remember we talked about the ampersand previously, and the ampersand simply means and, A and D, the same as and. And it's a little bit complicated in the citation. Sometimes you use ampersand, sometimes you use A and D. But here in the reference list, you always stick to the ampersand. And then we're going to have the year of publication for that article that you're citing, and then another period here. Then you're going to have the title of the article, so the name of the actual paper that you're citing. And the, cap the capitalization, the first word is capital, but the other words are lower case. And then you have a period. And then you're going to have the title of the periodical, and the title of the periodical is going to be capitalized just like the name of the journal is. So if the magazine of the journal has a capital letters, then you use the capital letters just the way they do in your name. And then you're going to have a comma, and then you're going to have the number and the issue of the journal. So that depends on journals are different about how they do that, comma. And then the pages, from what page to what page. And then you're going to have a DOI document identifier if you have one. And these days we often do. So that's the general form. We'll look more at this in the examples, of course. You can use brackets. Brackets are these things like this square bracket, left square bracket, right square bracket. And what are brackets for? Brackets are for special information. That is information that doesn't fit in that normal layout we just looked at. So letters, the emails, the maps, audio podcasts, things like that, things that are different or things that may not be in the APA manual yet. You can use this approach. If you have the document identifier, document object identifier, you can go ahead and use that. And here's an example of one. So here we go. We have the author's last name, comma, first name, period, middle name, period, comma, ampersand, second author, last name, first name, middle name. So look at the spacing there very carefully. Then we have parentheses, the year of the publication, period again. Then we have a name of the paper. So the paper is called Volunteer Support Marital, Marital Status, Volunteer Support Marital Status, and the Survival Times of Terminally Ill Patients. I want you to pay attention to that. Lowercase s, lowercase m, lowercase s. It's all lowercase except for that first letter of the first word. Then we have a period. Now we have the name of the journal, and the name of the journal is italicized at this angle, right? That's the same as using underline because it's the name of a book or the name of a journal. And we have a comma because now we're going to have the number of the journal. Now sometimes journals may just have a number. Sometimes they have may have a number and then they may also have an issue. 
So something like issue one, two, three, four. And then a comma, and then the page numbers. And the page numbers, please note, no P, no PP in there, just numbers. And then the ending has this period here. That's the end. But after the end, we can add something more. In this case, we can add the document object identifier, so we can have the DOI with a colon, no space, before, no space after, and just have the number there. Now this is the number that in theory should never change. So in the future, if someone is looking for this document, they can use that number and find it. And it doesn't matter what the publisher did to their database, that number is still matching this article. So that's the DOI, if you have it. And they're very common today, so you might as well go ahead and use them. If you don't have a DOI, but you still have a web address or a URL, as it's called, Universal Resource Locator, you can go ahead and use that instead. And here's how you would do that. It would be HTTP, and then you go ahead and write down the whole address, just like a regular web address.